good morning students good morning to all and last day we have studied about the international economics and we have studied the subject matter of the international economics and after that studied the meaning of trade and the types of trade so today also just we will remain what we have studied on last day and today also just go to the next chapter so last day just we studied the subject matter of international economies so what are the matters what are the subject matters will come to on the international economics so first one is pure theory of trade so in this international economics the pure theory of trade of one of the commons are there this commons explain the causes for foreign trade in what cause or in what reasons the foreign trade was appeared what arisen and the compositions direction and volume of trade so what are the compositions are there and in which directions the foreign trade will going move and the volume of trade volume of trade means so in the terms of trade so in the determinations of the terms of trade and the exchange rate is used related to the balance of trade and the balance of payment so what are the trade what are the issues will come into the balance of trade and the balance of trade everything we will study in the concept of or in the components of theory of trade or pure theory of trade so next one is policy issues so under this part the policy issues such as free trade assesses the protections and the methods of regulating trade and the capital and the technology flows how the capital and the technologies flows from one nation to another one of the nations and the use of taxation what are the use of there in this taxes what are the use of the taxes are there in this international trade and what are the subsidies and the dumping is followed in the international trade and the exchange control and the convertibility of foreign aid and the external borrowing and foreign direct investment everything you will study in the policy issues next international cartels and the blacks so so many of the cartels and the blacks are so there so this part the international cartels and the trade blacks deals with the economic integration in the form of international cartels custom unions and monetary unions so after that we have studied the trade so the term trade means the exchange of goods and services among the peoples normally we have studied about the trade it means the exchange of goods and services from the producer to consumers so this is also one type of the trade this in here also we will studied how the trade will moving from one place to another one of the place so in this trade we can classify it as a two types first one is internal trade and the international trade so the internal trade refers to the exchange of goods and services within the boundaries of one nation so the international trade refers to the exchange of goods and services within the political and geographical boundaries of one nation for example if the trade is takes place within the boundaries of the india only is called international trade so what are the product is produced in india it will be consumed by the indian people only so that is called an internal trade next international trade the international trade refers to the exchange of goods and services between two or more countries for example the multinational companies are producing any of the commodities from one nations but it will be going to consume by throughout the world like that some of the product is produced by one nations but this product is going to export to the another nations and consumed by throughout the world wherever this commodity is going to import and we have studied about some of the relationship between the internal trade and the external trade okay students if i explaining the difference between the internal trade and international trade it will take more time so just you study yourself you could understand i think so next we will go to the 
theories of internal international trade so many of the theories are there in this international trade so the classical theory and the mercantilism theory and the free trade theories and the free trade refined theories also is there so in this classical theory first one is the classical theory of international trade so even in the classical theory of international trade the three types of the trades are there so the absolute cost advantages and the comparative cost advantages and the the two type of the advantages are there first the classical theory of advantages so the adam smith developed the theory of absolute cost advantages so in this classical theory of international trade first we will study about the absolute cost advantages so the absolute cost advantages is developed by adam smith in 1776 and it was formulated as a explicit and precise theory by the david trigano after that this theory is improved by so many of the economists like j.s mill tosic and haberla so according to the adam smith the absolute cost advantage so adam smith argued that the, all the nations can be benefited when there is free trade and specialization in terms of their absolute cost advantage according to the adam smith if any of the nations has the free trade and if their absolute cost advantage so or if they having the specialization in terms of the absolute cost advantages so all the nations will can get the benefited when nations must be has the free trade and it will be get the specialization in terms of their absolute cost advantage absolute cost, cost advantages mean when nations must have the possible to produce any of the commodities with least cost advantage least cost if any of the nations has more resources and by using these more resources it can produce any of the commodities with the low cost and in this nation has the free trade so all the nations can get the benefited so according to adam smith the basis of international trade was absolute cost advantage so how the international trade is going to happen means on the basis of absolute cost advantages only absolute cost advantages mean if any of the nations have the possibilities to produce any of the commodities with low cost and if they produce more it will come to a international trade so the trade between two countries would be mutually beneficial when one country produces a commodities at an absolute cost advantages over the other countries for example if two nations are there india and america and the india has the possibility to produce the wheat within 1 rupees and the america also has the possibilities to produce the same wheat as in the 2 rupees but in the other hand if the india has the possibility to produce the 2 rupees for producing cloth and the controversy the america also has the possibility to produce the one unit of cloth in within one rupees mean so the india and america will come to an international trade dealings so which in turn produces another commodity at an absolute cost advantage over the first country for explaining this theory so we must take in out of assumptions so what are the assumptions we have to taken means first there are two countries and two commodities for explaining this absolute cost advantages we have to assume, assume so there are two countries and two commodities two countries and two commodities mean the two countries only are going to involving in this international trade and the two countries also producing the two commodities only for example wheat and cloth the both countries are producing cloth and wheat only so next labor is only factor of production so the labor is only the factor of production 
labor is only factor of production means so four factor of production will be using to produce the commodities but we have to assuming the labor only is the factor of production there is no capital and other factor of productions by using the labor only the two nations are going to produce or achieving the productions next labor units are homogeneous so all the unit of labor are, will be the homogeneous the labor in india and the labor for the america also will be the homogeneous the power and the ability and the skills will be the same next the fourth assumption this is the important assumption so the cost or the price of a commodity is measured by amount of labor required to produce it so we have to assuming the cost or price of a commodity is measured by amount of labor required to produce it how many uh, labors how much amount of labor is going to involve to produce any of the commodity that is the amount for the price of a commodity this is the main assumption so next day, there is the no transport cost okay but now in this international trade the transport cost is considered on the basis of the constitution of every nations but there is no transport cost so the five assumptions must be taken out to explaining the theories so now we can explaining the absolute cost advantages by seeing this schedule itself at first first just when we are seeing this schedule we can clarify it so the country is mentioned in one column and the two nations the india and the china is are mentioned in another one of the columns so india when india produced the wheat the 20 unit of labor the 20 unit of labor is going to produce Next to the China also, so India can produce 20 unit of wheat per unit of one labor. And the China also can produce the 8 labor per unit of output. So here next to the country, the cloth, the India also can produce the 6 unit of output per one labor. Next to the China also produce the 14 unit of cloth so we can easily clarified by one unit of labor so india can produce 20 unit of wheat so china also produced the 8 unit of wheat per using one labor so the same the india also can produce the 6 unit of cloth per unit of one labor the china also can produce the 14 unit of cloth per unit of labor so from that illustrations so it is clear that india has an absolute advantage in the production of wheat over china and china also has an absolute advantage in the production of cloth over india so therefore india should specialize in the production of wheat and import cloth from china so like that china also have the possibilities are specialized in the production of cloth and import wheat from india so this kind of trade would be mutually beneficial to the both india and china so now when we are seeing the diagram you can easily understand so india can produce the 20 unit of wheat and 6 unit of cloth by using one unit of labor so like that china can produce the 14 unit of cloth and 18 unit of wheat by using one unit of labor so now the india has more power or more specialized skill to produce the wheat but it does not specialize the skill to produce the cloth but in the same time so the china has more power to producing the specialized skill to, to produce the cloth and less specialization to produce the wheat so now the india can export to the wheat to the china so instead of that so it can easily import the wheat 
so the india also can export the wheat to the china instead of cloth so here so which nation has the more powerful to produce any of the commodities that product has to be export to the another nations and which product is not able to produce with the absolute cost advantage it can import so on the basis of absolute cost advantages only so the nations are come to the international trade next comparative cost advantage the comparative cost advantage comparative cost advantage is developed by the david ricardo he is the british economist he is published one his book so the principle of political economy and the taxation so in this book he formulated a systematic theory it is called comparative cost theory so the comparative cost advantages so the ricardo demonstrate that the basis of trade is the comparative cost differences in other words trade can take place even if the absolute cost differences is absent but there is comparative cost difference so even if there is no absolute cost advantage so by comparative by comparing the cost advantages with another nations so if the nations are thinking it is better to import from another nations it will come to an international trade so according to ricardo a country can gain from trade when it produces at relatively lower cost so even when a country enjoys absolute advantages in both goods the country would specialize in the production and export of those goods which are relatively more advantages even when there is absolute cost advantages and when we are comparing to the advantages or the cost advantages with the another nations if the nations are thinking it is very beneficial to import from another nations it will import from others so when a country has absolute disadvantages in production of both goods the country would specialize in production and export of the commodity in which it is relatively less disadvantages so for explaining this comparative cost advantages we have to take some of the assumptions so there are only two nations two commodity the two nations only are there the two nations also going to produce two commodity next labor is the element so labor is the only element of cost of production the cost of production is mentioned by the labor only so all laborers are the equal efficiency so the labor in the both nations also will have the same efficiency so next the labor is perfectly mobile within the country but perfectly immobile between countries so on the basis of demand it will be perfectly mobile but it is perfectly immobile between the countries next the production is subject to the law of constant returns the production is subject to the law of constant returns means even if the labors are going to increase so the constant returns only will be get next foreign trade is free from all barriers so there is no barriers no tax policies no constitutions and there is no any of the barriers next no change in technology so what technology is going to use to produce any of the commodities in one nation so it will be no change it is a permanent one so no transport cost so as i said in first uh, theories there is no transport cost next the full employment will be there in both nations next the no government interventions so there is no government interventions within the two nations internet trade so next the illustrations the ricardo's theory of comparative cost 
can be explained with the hypothetical example production, cost of cloth and wheat in America and India. So comparative cost advantage also can be easily explained by seeing this scheduled. So one column is mentioned uh, the countries and the next column is cloth, next is wheat and next is domestic exchange ratio. So this is the important on the basis of the exchange ratio only we can get good the comparative cost advantage. So here just to see when you are seeing the diagram and the schedule we can get one of the evident from the example. So India has an absolute advantage in production of both cloth and wheat. See, so the India also can have the power to produce the cloth by 90s labor and the wheat. So when we are producing the wheat and the cloth, they will get the absolute cost advantage. But however, India should concentrate on the production of wheat in which she enjoys a comparative cost advantage. So when we are producing any of the commodities, when we are producing the wheat by using the 800, so 80 labors, so it will be produce more wheat and it will be export to the America. So instead of producing the cloth India itself it can import from the America because we have to comparing the cost advantage so 80 by 120 is less than 90 by 100 so when India is going to produce the wheat at 80 unit of labor and in the same time, the India is producing the 90 unit of labor, sorry, the one unit of labor per 90 labors. But in the same time, the America is producing one unit of cloth by using the 100 unit of labor. So there is no more disadvantages. Okay. So even if the India is going to produce the one cloth of wheat by using the 80 unit of labor, so the America also using the 120 unit. So the India can produce the wheat and it will be export to the America. But instead of producing the cloth by using the 90 unit of labor, so it will be import from the America. Because when you are comparing the advantages with the America, so the America will not get the more disadvantages. So by seeing the less disadvantages, so the America can import the cloth to the India. So in the same time, so the America have to be in need of more disadvantages by producing the wheat. So it will be export, so it will be produced the, so the India can produce the wheat and it will be export to the America. For America, the comparative cost advantage is lesser in cloth production. So hence, America will specialize in the production of cloth and export it to India in exchange for wheat. So here we have to note one thing. In trade, India can get one unit of cloth and one unit of wheat by using its 160 labor units. So by using the 160 unit of labor only, so the India can get the 1 unit of wheat by using the 1 unit of cloth. For getting this benefit, India will have to use 170 units of labor. So like that, America also gain from this trade. So with the trade, America can get one unit of cloth and one unit of wheat by using 200 units of labor. Otherwise, yeah, America will have to use 220 units of labor for getting one unit of cloth and one unit of wheat. Because the cost differentiation, the domestic exchange rate is for unit the one wheat is equal to 1.2 cloth. One wheat is equal to 0 0.88 cloth only. 
so we have to arrange more labor to producing the cloth in india so the america also have to arrange more labor to produce one unit of wheat so the india has to concentrate to produce more wheat and it can be able to export to the america the same time the america can get produce the more cloth and it will be export to the india so when we are comparing the cost with one another if a nations are feeling it will be better so the nation must be come to the international trade so like that just to see so the america also will have the more power to one unit labor so 100 unit of labor for cloth the india also has the power 80 unit 80 unit of labor per unit of wheat and the 90 labor required per unit of cloth but here no more difference between the 90 and 100 so the america is also producing the one unit of cloth by using the 100 unit of labor but the india also producing the 90 unit of labor by producing one unit of cloth so when we are comparing the advantage cost there is no more disadvantages for america to produce the cloth and import export to the india so here the america the america also has the more labor required to produce one unit of wheat but india also has the less labor required to produce one unit of wheat so the india can produce so india can produce the wheat more wheat and it will be export to the america the same time so the america can produce more cloth and it will be export to the india so when we are comparing the cost analysis when we are comparing the cost advantages if we are feeling if it is better so one nations will come to an end so here we have to note the two criticism so labor cost is a small portion of the total cost hence theory based on labor cost is unrealistic because we must use the more factor of production so but this cost advantages theory only is taking into the account of labor but it is unrealistic Next, laborers in different countries are not equal in efficiency, because then Indian people may consider as yeah very efficient peoples, and some of the nations peoples may be the laziest peoples, and vice versa. So the efficiency always will be differ in the different nations. Okay, student, if you have any doubt, please ask me. Tomorrow we will go to the next concept. Thank you.